Stokes Sweet to Mama and Frank Stokes was a, a blues man who recorded in the 20s quite a lot of songs and uh, he's called the creator of the Memphis blues so uh, Sweet to Mama I'm in high G tuning but I'm tuned a half step down so this is F sharp B D sharp and G sharp otherwise it's for me too high to sing so this suits my voice better. Has a slightly bluesier sound as well. Okay, um, the song is in the key of C and it uses the alternating bass. So I'm always alternating with my thumb between the fourth and the third string. And well, if you don't know this style, then uh, well, you have a lot of practicing ahead before you because this has to be automatic you don't have to uh, if you have to think about it it will not work so this should be very automatic and you should consider it as you have of course well which I would call the bass line and then the trebles the melod melody notes and you should see them as a whole not as I'm doing this and then I'm doing that no it's it's either on the beat a pinch like that or between the beats, on and between, like the first uh, bar. Well, I forgot to say, you can uh, download the tap, there's a link in the video description that will lead you to the tap, and it's free. How about that? <laughs> okay, uh, let's play the intro, which is uh, pretty much the same as the verse, uh, very slowly. One, two, three, four. So we're starting with our C chord. And we're going down to the C7 and adding the third fret, third string. So. And then. It is a G7 shape. 
moved up. And here I'm in a little arpeggio. And then we're going to our F chord and we're doing a long hammer on. So it starts on the fourth beat of the fourth measure and ends in the first beat of the fifth measure. So <clears throat> again that fourth measure. So the hammer on is done when you're on the next beat. And that's important, you change in the last beat of the sixth measure to the C chord again. Don't hold that F longer because then it doesn't sound right. So again, measures five and six. Pinching that with my two fingers, one for each string, the first and the second string. And again, that change in the last beat of the tenth measure to the, back to the C chord. Again, those ninth and tenth measures. have that bend. You know we did that alternating, you should call it not the alternating bass because it's not an eight bass string, but in guitar uh, playing we call that the alternating bass. And But when you have a melody note on that one of those bass strings, like the third string here, you have to do it in between beats, otherwise your sequence of uh, bass notes will be out of order. Or sometimes, well, I sometimes do it, and then you have uh, the temp and index on the same string. So that tenth uh, measure again, and then further, and change. And you see, when it's in between beats, you can even let it. Uh, ring to the next uh, beat, which is necessary here. It's not a short bend. So that's it for the intro, and uh, let's play the verse now also slowly. And I'll do it with uh, some vocals later on. As you noticed, it's pretty much the same. There are slight variations, and that's something I will also like to stress. There are a lot of variations when, for example, the first measure, you can play that second beat not on the beat, that, that melody note. Well, on the first beat, I should say. Like, for example, the second measure. And all those little measures are interchangeable. So uh, you've noticed probably that I would use in the, in the vocalized uh, verse. Sweet, sweet mama, sweet mama. Da, 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 da. See? So all those things are interchangeable. So let's uh, go over the verse uh, one more time. That's the same as before. that slow hammer on again that early change to the C chord back to the C chord back to our G chord
You'll notice that in the tap in the 23rd and 24th measure I put some notes between brackets and I should not consider them as melody notes because if it's played on uh, at speed you can hardly hear them. They're not fully sounding. They're just uh, a way to get to the other note uh, a little bit easier I think. Now I'll do some variations and below you see that in the tap there's an, an uh, alternate bar for bars 19 and or 23 and goes like very simple so let's do uh, the vocals a little bit woke up this morning woke up this morning blues around my baby's bed woke up this morning blues around bit late there. That's something you have to uh, also, well you can adapt that to your own singing because not everybody says the words in the same manner and this is just an example how you could do it. And of course with the other verses where there are more or less words there will be slight changes which word you sing at which moment. But that's uh, something, once you have the arrangement in your fingers that will be uh, easier to to adjust. Okay, I did some variations um, for the F chords. Uh, woke up this morning, woke up this morning. Woke up this morning, blues round my baby's bed. I get, it's quite a stretch, and if you manage. So in the 18 bar, I would do this in place that this. And instead of I did just the opposite of the third beat of the 18th measure. So. And then that's that variation for the 19 bar. And if you listen carefully to the performance, you I switch all those things uh, together. There's also a variation which I didn't do, but sounds cool. When you do that bend, hit two notes instead of just the third string at the open uh, second string. That's also possible. Um, and you will notice that I, I mix the intro and the verse. Uh, all those measures are interchangeable, I said that before. Um, what else is there to say? Um, oh yeah, the solos, I forgot those. I didn't tap those out because they're pretty much improvised. Uh, but the first one was based, uh, in fact, on the, um, the measure where we go to the bend, for, for example, the 19th uh, measure. So I played... So you could say that I'm starting with the last beat of the 18th measure. Another variation. Anyway, it's important of course that the bend is in between beats, otherwise you're gonna get in trouble. And then I went to the F chord and then also um, and then or so I simply rocked back and forth one fret that G chord and I kept the bass go the, the alternating bass going. And then the other solo, well, it's pretty much the progression, but not in the first position, but higher up. So we use that G-shaped uh, chord moved up to the 7th, 8th and 7th fret. So that's a C chord. 
And what I did is adding the pinky to the 10th fret. So. And you see, the bass keeps going. Whatever I do with that chord rocking back and forth, it just keeps going. Then keep your third finger on the 8th fret and move your pinky to the 9th fret 3rd string and your middle finger to the 1st string 6th fret. That's sort of F chord. So. I did some rhythmic variations there, but if you keep it straight it sounds like this. Barring the 7th fret, adding the 8th fret on the 1st string and the 10th fret with the pinky. And then move down the chord 2 steps, 2 frets. Keep it going. So, 6th um, fret, 5th fret, 6th fret, 1st string, and then the 2nd string on the 8th uh, fret, slide it down. Notice that I'm keeping the sound short by moving up and down my chords. Okay, I think uh, that covers Sweet to Mama, fun song. And check out uh, Geoff Muldor's uh, guitar version and also Frank Stokes version. But I, I think I own more to Geoff Muldor's version. It's a bit uh, more swinging. Um, also note that I... Sweet to Mama, Sweet to Mama, I accent those notes. <laughs> Try to work with some dynamics here and keep the notes sometimes short to get a swing feel. Okay, have fun with Sweet to Mama.